Let's say let, let's go with the show. Let's go with what what did we now that it's over? What what did we not get to do that we would have liked to have done? I don't know, man. Um, legit, I don't know. Um, I think it's easier for me to say like what Jared would like to do. I mean, I, I I love traveling, and I would love to continue to travel and see some spaces. Um, I I've I would love to learn other languages. I mean, I feel like I could live if there were five Jareds right now living uh, lives. I feel like I still wouldn't be able to do all of the things that I want to do. Um, you know what? Then maybe my answer is I would like to learn how to just calm down and chill out because I can't stop moving. And I would love to learn how to like, and for the, maybe that uh, links over to Sam Winchester. Like I would love for him to really be at a space. It seems like he did um, in the final episode, at least for a little bit. I think he was still conflicted and probably still, you know, thoughtful and pensive about his brother and his, the life that he had led for so long, but just learn to be, you know, there's a question earlier about like, what do you want to pass on to your kids? And it's some degree of sort of like peace and calm and comfort with yourself and those around you. And so um, I, I, I don't know if I haven't done that yet, but I like to keep on working on just being um, happy where I am and with who I am. I'll, I'll go the show route. Uh, I'll, I'll say that um, something that, that I think that I would have liked to have done on Supernatural uh, we didn't get to do was, and, I, and I, I don't think, you know, I don't think there was, there was uh, a reason why we, uh, there was plenty of reasons why we couldn't. It was just, I think, logistics, but I would have liked to have had a crossover of some sort. I would have liked to have had, uh, you know, gone over to like vampire diaries and like just nuked them all uh, or gone or, or, you know, cut a deal with AMC and the walking dead and, and have the Impala roll in and just like slaughterhouse five. Uh, By the way, that, that should be our only, that should be our one stipulation. Like we'll do more supernaturals, but we're only going to go into other shows and kill them all. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh my god! It should be like a twelve-episode season of us going like to Ozark and killing the bad guys. That's it. Going to like you know uh, whatever else is on, and and just killing all the bad guys. Talk you know, about it. slumming it, slumming it for the other show. Uh, <laughs> talk about a ratings dip. Uh, no, but we'd be naked. We'd be naked. Talk so. about a ratings spike. Boom! There we go. Oh, there you go. We changed that. Yeah. There you go. Um, yeah, I that, I thought that would have been really cool if, if we could have figured out to uh, some sort of a crossover. And I mean, clearly we're doing that now on on a variety of shows. Uh, so it's I know it's not impossible, but I just don't think it made sense uh, given the story they were telling at the time. But that would have been fun. I would have liked to have done that. Uh, all right, this one says Jensen. So I'll take what happened when you were snow tubing with JJ. Oh, uh, yeah. So. Uh, I, I I took JJ to uh, to go tubing down the the snow hill uh, down the the road at the park, and she met a, a friend there uh, who was the same age and who was tubing as as well with her mom, and, and they asked if they could uh, tube together, and so the mom was up at the top, and they were like, can can they go together? I'm like, yeah yeah, that's that's fine, you know, it, it, it was safe. Everybody was masked up, and I mean they're in full snow gear, so. Um, but uh, so they, they hop on this tube and or the sled, and at the bottom of the sled, the sledding hill, um, which is like kind of the designated sledding hill, there's a fire hydrant. I don't know why, uh, and but it was wrapped with like a uh, like a gym pad. So, <clears throat> so here they come. They're coming down, and it's just they just start like literally beelining right off off the you know, the run right straight towards the, uh, the fire hydrant and which the, I had touched the pad earlier as solid as a rock because it was frozen. Uh, whatever material it was, it was in there, it was, you know, not cushiony at all. <laughs> and so I just, I start making my way that way going like, surely they're gonna move. Surely they're going to like duck out or fall over or turn or do something. No beeline straight for this, uh, immovable object. 
So I just threw myself in front of the sled and in between that and the fire hydrant. And it actually, it, I, I kind of like went down to try to like take the, the brunt of it off of my thigh and hip. And it flipped me completely over. I did, a, <laughs> I did a full, I did like a full NFL flip into the end zone. Uh, did you land on your feet? Uh, no, I landed right on my square on my butt. And, and, but I had, I had, soften the impact enough for them not to have been uh seriously hurt they they were banged a little bit uh as was i but uh yeah that's that's what happened it just <laughs> and I, I i posted it and i i kind of i tried to make a joke out of it saying like oh i should have just stayed there and left the camera roll because that would have made for an epic fail video and what kind <laughs> of an influencer am i if i can't cap capture good you know uh good content when it happens but I, I snapped into dad mode there and it was just like, you know, throw, throw your body in front of the speeding train and, and save your children. So that's, that's what happened with that. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah. Kmart. Uh, yeah. What's something that when you think about it, you can't help but smile. Many jib shenanigans for me. <laughs> uh, well, I, I have been laughing out loud for what? How long since the Gill video? Two days? I mean, I feel like I should show them what you just did to me. Do it. Do it. All right. Here you go, Kmart. This has been my last two days of laughing out loud. So Jared just sent this to me uh, just before we started the, the, the panel. And I've been laughing out loud like, like a child. And to preface this, I, I will say that he, he uh, I sent him a picture of myself uh, to show him some some beard uh, updates. Because uh, that's As one does. Because we're, we're dumb like that and we, we do stupid stuff like that. So right. he took he took this beard update and decided to uh, try to try to like make it up a little, maybe maybe yeah. make it a little a, a little snappier. So this is this is now this is now going to be in my head for the rest of the day, <laughs> the rest of the day. Okay, that's enough of that. Uh, I hope you all are laughing and not horrified. Uh, I think you killed four more people. Yeah. Four died when you said you parted out the Impala. Four more yeah. just died the bearded uh, Cardi B. <laughs> so, oh man, I'm crying. bearded Cardi B. It sounds like a that sounds like a circus attraction. It, it, I think it is. Um, <laughs> yes, that's fine. Um, that's oh, what's boy. been making him smile for the past few. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, who did? Was it was it Fergus who did the one of Gil? yeah? Ferg, Fergus did Gill. You have that one. We have a big we have a big text thread with with uh, mm -hmm. uh, a lot of the cast uh, that and, and we all keep in touch, uh, which is just proof that you know these conventions that we go on and we show that we're not just faking it. We we really truly are a big group of of crazy friends and and we enjoy each other's company and and each other's banter. Uh, and we had this. Text thread. I think I think I actually started it with that picture of Rob. Uh, he had posted a picture, and I I had a comment about it, so I reposted it on the thread, and then that just like threw a whole conversation uh, out of orbit. And yeah. this, this was one of the posts that the conversation led. To. I don't know how to push it. <laughs> it's so stupid. There's also this. So Jensen just had a birthday. Um, he's looking a little bit older, but he still looks good. Damn it. How do I do it? Yes. <laughs> oh my gosh and like i literally think i'm gonna be fired because i'm spending probably 20 hours a day just on that app like laughing to myself doing and there's like bombaleo and um yeah it's a uh, good, good times uh yeah i i uh i'll also say that jared and i uh on occasion have been known to go back and watch uh the blooper reels from from early earlier seasons yeah. uh there there's some there are some shenanigans that have happened on set that when we when reminded of 
will simply bring a, a smile and a chuckle and quite possibly a spit take uh, to, to the face. So, yeah. Thanks. Thanks, Game Art. I miss you. Elena, pause. Hey, guys. So nice to see you. Love you. So my question is, if Sam and Dean were telling a bedtime story, what would it be about? <laughs> I'm going to go first with you, Aggles. Uh, yeah, go ahead, because i got to find something real quick. <laughs> okay, shoot. Uh, okay, bedtime story. So my kids want bedtime stories all the <laughs> I have that too. Boom, done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. boom. <laughs> that that would work. I mean, I think we have 327 bedtime stories to choose from. Uh, my kids always want me to tell them like scary stories. Like, tell me a scary story about this or that. I'll be like, well, I don't really know a scary story about this or that. And they're like, well, make one up. I'm like, all right, I'll make one up. And then I end up telling them a story and they like nightmares and sleep in our room and they'll tell Jen, like, dad scared us. We're having nightmares. Like you told me to tell you a scary story. <laughs> like I don't know what to do. So my scary story. Do you make them up? I make them up totally. <laughs> oh, well, they tell God. me, they tell me like, they're like, can you tell a scary story about a dinosaur? I'm like, well, I, okay, here we go. So one time um, when you, you just were- plug the scary story into like a movie that you've seen. Or, or, or pl- plug the dinosaur into like, you know, like exorcists. Like no, there was a dinosaur laying on the bed and it was possessed by Satan. No, mine are kind of open-ended. Like, cause they might go to bed, you know, in 30 seconds. And then I'll just tell <laughs> the story. So I'll be like, I was walking through the yard and I heard a noise and I looked over. I didn't see anything. So I kept walking. I closed the chicken coop and um, I made sure the gate was closed and I took garbage to the street. I heard the noise again, but it was louder. And so I want to see what the noise was. So I walked over to the side of the house. I didn't see anything. You know, like it's just, it, that's not nothing. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And it's a nothing story about like. It's, it's like telling a, a ghost story with no real punchline. Yeah. I'm just like yeah. talking until they fall asleep. And so like it, it carries on. Remember how we've talked about. So Ackles and I have talked about, you know, uh, being a background actor um, where you have to be like in a bar scene. Um, and, um, you know, you're in the, you're, you're not the ones talking right by camera you're behind them like the best thing to do is to start telling a joke that never ends it's like okay uh a, a guy's walking down the street he sees two girls and three guys crossing the other way so the guy crosses the street but two cars come one's yellow one's black and so the yellow and black car pass up and he like you're te- like that way it feels like meanwhile the director's like cut 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 what's up with the over animated background actor can it's somebody not, tell like, it's his arms to his side please it's the only the only way to properly do it is to tell the longest joke of all time if it's a four minute scene like just tell a four minute joke that never gets to the punchline because you're actually doing something you're like and then so he 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 meets the guys it's a guy named uh jen a girl named jerry so he's like, well, Jen and Jerry, shouldn't it be Jerry and Jen? And they're like, no, no, we're Jen and Jerry. So he starts crossing the street, sees a black and yellow car going the other way. And people are like, what? <laughs> it lasts forever. You gotta, have, you gotta have a payoff. You gotta take a joke that has a punchline, and then you just breathe life into the, like, uh, you know, McDougal the Roadmaker. Right. Like, you could you make that one as long as you wanted, but there's still a punchline. That's fair. But I guess when the joke is like four minutes long, it probably doesn't get a laugh. Yeah. You can always go with like wrecked him and nearly killed him. <laughs> I mean, I guess, I guess in, in fairness, uh, uh, in fairness, that's probably the best thing to do. Uh, all right. I think I have, we have another. You could also just go, always go with like a series of your dad jokes. Oh. Which great. are phenomenal. Which are pretty great. Phenomenal. I, okay. going. We're going to go back a couple of questions. Krista, this is something. That makes me laugh when I think about it. Jared telling the joke. Did you hear there was? <laughs> what? <laughs> What's going on? Did did you <laughs> did you hear there was an explosion at a cheese factory in France? <laughs> Debris was everywhere. <laughs> that is, that's a good one. There was debris everywhere. <laughs> How many times have you told that? I I'm can't. Sure. I can't get through it, so I don't tell it. Because <laughs> I. Oh my gosh! That I don't know why it's just so stupid. <laughs> it's so stupid. Oh, it's it like the, it's like the video. I know my eyes are like getting. Uh, all right, let's get uh, Gento, Gento, from Lithuania. I can say that. 
Uh, thanks for doing this. Thank you. Hope you're both doing good. We are. What is your favorite stunt you did? Jumping through the window. Jumping through yeah. the window. Yeah. That's 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 definitely top three. Yeah. Yeah. Um, my reverse one eighty in the in baby. Oh yeah, I, I I love that one. I'm trying to think if there was because those are those are definitely go to like faves. Yeah. Try to think if there was maybe a sleeper one that was that was really cool. Uh, I don't know. I'm sure. Oh, this, this might help jog a memory. We're not going to go through it, but did you get this? I got a box. I got a. I got a box. Okay, a, yeah. that's that's Jerry Wanix, all fifteen seasons, no! three hundred and twenty-seven. I, I have a box. Look at the look at the size of this thing, and I they're have, numbered. I have a box. Oh, shit. they're number they're numbered too. This, like, I think he only made like five hundred of them, and they're each like numbered. Yeah, this is this is number six of five fifty. No, I must and, have it. Hey, do you, a, have, do you still have this? Yes, the mark. Yeah, look at the first picture. Is though, awesome manners. Yeah, yep. but this is uh, so. Just real quick to to tell the folks here. Are they for uh, sale or are they? Are no, they no, 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 no. This was something, and he never sold them. So Jerry Wanick, our production designer, uh, who was with us uh, every every season, um, and designed all the sets that you see. I mean, from the the from the layout of a motel room to the, to the wallpaper. Yeah. Um, and he would document and go in and take pictures. And every year at the end of the season, we would get these, these uh, little coffee table books that were a series of his photos that he had taken of the sets throughout the season. And he has compiled not just his sets pictures, but also just behind the scene pictures of as you can see it says 15 seasons 327 episodes uh into a, a substantial this is the back of it into a substantial book uh and it's i i flipped through it uh and it's it jogs a lot of memories dude it's pretty cool it's a yeah. it's like a it's like a, it's like it literally it's like a, a high school yearbook if high school lasted for 15 years which it did for some people yeah <laughs> Stop talking about my uncle. Uh, Dad. All right. All right. Uh, Russia, uh, what would have happened if Sam had been in Dean's place? Would Dean have been able to live without his brother? I'll do that. So that right. little rebar couldn't have pierced my lats. <laughs> <laughs> we would have had like five more seasons because that wouldn't have hurt me. Yeah, Sam would have gone into the into the rebar, and the rebar would have come out the other side of the post. So. <laughs> you freaking ox! Uh, <laughs> oh shit! Uh, um, so I, I, I'll touch on that. I, I touched on this a little bit in, in the meet and greet and a, a couple times in the, my one on ones. Is that uh, I, I think this was I think this was the proper way to go. Um, because I think of the two brothers, Sam was Sam was probably the one that was most likely to be able to find purpose in life outside of his brother, and to find uh, to find uh, love and and a reason to keep going. Um, and I just I think that Sam always had more of that kind of uh, macro vision of of life. Whereas Dean was much more micro and probably the law of his brother would have been the beginning of the end of him. I think that he would have probably just wasted away in the back of a pool hall. Uh, and, and I, so I, I think it, it, I think it was better in my opinion that Dean was the one to go and, and Sam was the only one obvious in my opinion to, to, to have the capability of of finding a way to live life without his brother um not to say that you know he didn't need his but he needed his brother but he he was i think I, I think just more intelligently able to navigate life uh dean was wouldn't have been able to do it i don't think in my opinion i just think that's that those those are a major different characteristics of those two characters is is that sam was able to uh um also i think also sam was able to know like dean 
would come back to life and kick my ass if I kept hunting. Like he didn't, you know, he brought me like Dean brought Sam back into the world. Right. And I think Dean really wanted Sam to be able to get out of the world. Well, and I also think Sam was was not only just finding a life beyond his brother dying for himself. I think he was finding a life beyond his brother dying for his brother. Uh, and so I, I think uh, uh, Sam was a character capable of, of understanding that uh, and understanding the weight of that emotion. And I just I don't know if Dean was would be able to process that in a positive way. Yeah, fair. Yeah. Awesome. OK, I think this is our last question. Uh, Busey, Buse. Okay. Uh, hi from Turkey. Hi. My question is to both of you: What song reminds you of your character on SBN? Um, you know, I. So this is kind of funny. Um, my uh, my alarm. I have an iPhone, and my uh, my alarm. You know, you can like set uh, your alarm to be. Uh, uh, whatever you want, like you can make it a song in your library. And my alarm right now for, for the last couple of months has been brothers in arms by dire straits, uh, which is the, the song that plays, uh, during the hunter's funeral for Dean and stuff. And that just, for whatever reason, when that song hit, I, we didn't, I didn't know, I don't know if Apple's new, but when I watched the finale, I didn't know they were going to play brothers in arms, uh, for that part. And I just lost it all over again. And so that song for sure, um, you know, obviously, um, carry on wayward son is, is something I still listen to. It makes me smile. Uh, but I don't know if anything re reminds me of my character so much as reminds me of the show reminds me of the Winchesters, uh, reminds me of supernatural and my 15 and a half years, uh, standing across from this dude kind of doing the show, telling the story and traveling around the world and meeting you guys and gals. Um, so I don't think anything reminds me of Sam Winchester specifically, but there are a, a, a several songs that remind me of, uh, the Winchesters. Yeah. Uh, I, I mean, I, I can't listen to back in black without just immediately kind of snapping into character. Uh, so I, I, I think, I think ACDC back in black is certainly one that represents Dean quite well. Um, I also think that, uh, um, don't fear the reaper <laughs> because yeah, dude. yeah. Uh, I think, I think that one has, has a lot of just weighty points uh, in, in our show. Man, uh, when, when it, I was, I was in the car on the way to set uh, like a month ago and renegade came on and I went onto YouTube and looked up like supernatural sticks, renegade yeah. the scene from um, night shift, night shifter, night shifter. Yeah. Night shifter. Um, and watched it. I was like, that's good. That's good TV. Like that's really I mean, it's good cool. TV. I, I know. I, 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 I find myself, you know, looking back, uh, on, you know, whether it's a clip or a, a, a gif or a meme or something that I catch on the internet. Um, you know, I saw, I saw a little, I think it was a little gif of, of, uh, Dean chasing, uh, Dracula in monster movie, uh, <laughs> Stashwick. And and I just I immediately was like, that was a fun show. That was a fun episode to do in a show that wasn't never ne was never supposed to be fun. Um, and so I, I there's there are certain songs that immediately take me back to certain times in the show. Uh, night, I can't listen to Bob Seger Night Moves anymore um, no without, without you and I without just thinking about you and I in the car driving me dodging potholes and then. Uh, Don Payne show in the back with his uh, with his sound equipment. We had our sound guy was in the trunk because he had to play back and also record our dialogue yeah. all at the same time. This was a this was a free drive situation, uh, so it was just Jared and I in the front in the front seat, and then Don was literally in the trunk of the Impala. And anytime we hit a pothole or a bump or so, we were driving through a construction construction site. It, he would just send him soaring and it almost like popped the trunk like several times. Um, but, uh, but yeah, there, there are certain songs throughout this show that have, uh, that have, that will forever represent either the character, uh, a, a moment, a scene or the show in its entirety. And, uh, you know, that's, I think that speaks volumes to not only the show, but also to the, our music producer and, and the, and the music that uh, represented us. Yeah. 
Um, all right, guys. I guess that's it. Uh, it was awesome to be able to talk to y'all in some crazy way, shape, or form. I know. I, guys, just so you know, like Jared and I only see each other here, and we have gotten enough of that for our uh, three lifetimes. So the fact that we can't see you is – is uh, uh, you, you can tell how well he and I just work off the cuff by ourselves, um, which is probably something that will never change, uh, and it is something that I will always pride myself in. Uh, love you, brother. Uh, love all of you guys. I can't wait to see you guys in person soon. I miss hugs. I miss smiles. I miss laughter. Uh, I miss I miss uh, singing and voices and crowd and energy and all of that. And hopefully, hopefully we can get all all back to that soon. Um, here's hoping. Yeah, love you, brother. All right, miss you guys. Bye. Hey y'all. Jared Padalecki here. I am presenting the award for Best Supporting Actress in a movie made for television or limited series. And they picked me for this category because I have some experience in limited series. I mean, I just started my new show, Walker, but my last series, Supernatural, ended after 15 years and 327 episodes. I mean, so I know what it's like to have to tell a story beginning, middle, and end in just a decade and a half. Crazy, right? <laughs> so, if anyone can appreciate these performances, it's me. And the nominees are. On a Saturday, uh, unless I guess you're in Australia or something, and then it's probably Sunday. Sunday, I think, Sunday? yeah. They're, rainy they're, day here in Austin. Rainy day here in Austin, so I was able to wear my hoodie, which I'm excited about. Uh, we wanted to kind of check in with you guys. I know we've been uh, talking a lot about... Uh, what we're doing at Mantra and wanted to kind of answer some questions, uh, see your comments because we can't see your faces. You all see our faces. Uh, apologies. Well, uh, well for, for me, I'm just so excited so many people showed up to see me. I didn't, yeah. they didn't know you were going to be here, right? I didn't know you were going to be here. No, no, I no idea. I think this, I this, no is, idea. this is amazing, but yeah. thanks for joining me. I yeah, appreciate you're it. You're welcome. Appreciate yeah, it. It. at least I could do. <laughs> uh, so I wanted to start out before I get to questions, I want to start out with kind of what my journey was. Uh, to, uh, to, to get here and long story short, um, as a lot of y'all know, there, uh, a, a little pandemic kind of thing started about this time last year. And I was on a show called supernatural and we had two episodes left to film before we finished our 327 episode, 15 and a half year run, which yeah, I'm, accomplishment right there. Yeah. Yeah. It, I'm, I'm proud of it. Um, uh, even more so now than when I was even on it. Uh, but it was a difficult time for me. You know, they on, on Friday, March 13th, uh, for you Friday 13th fans out there, um, they sent us home from uh, Canada to Texas because we didn't know what was going to happen. We didn't know if the borders were going to close. We, no one really knew yet. You know, I'm sure you all remember a year ago um, and nobody really knew what to expect. Uh, so they sent me home and then I got home and I'm sort of like, OK, I don't know what to do. So I enjoyed a few days of going like, oh, we'll probably can go back to work in a week or maybe two weeks if it's if it's really crazy. Uh, and weeks and weeks and months and months passed. And for me, it was a pretty difficult time. Um, I was home. I was excited, but I was kind of like grieving the loss of the show, grieving the loss of my character, um, which hadn't happened yet. And I still hope we come back. Um, so so make your comments known to the to the awesome people at WBNCW. But uh, long story short, I, I just kind of lost direction uh, to some degree. You know, I was, I was here at home, but I didn't really know how to do things at home. You know, Jen had done it all for years and years and years, and I had kind of been in a different country playing pretend. Uh, and, you know, I, I stopped shaving. Uh, I, I probably missed a couple of showers. Um, maybe a couple more than a couple of showers, but I just sort of felt really lackadaisical. And like, I, all of a sudden I had all this time that I hadn't had in 20 years, you know, cause I had done Gilmore Girls for five years before Supernatural. And so I was just used to kind of go, 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 go. And I sort of just became uh, a, a bit of a, a sloth or a slug. And I, I couldn't really feel, I, I couldn't figure out why I didn't feel like doing anything. And it took my doctor, uh, who I've been working with, who I have been working with for uh, s almost seven years, uh, to say, you know what? I, I think you're depressed. 
And I was like, but I, I don't feel sad necessarily. I just don't want to get out of bed. I don't want to play with my kids. I don't want to go work out. I don't want to go for a walk. And uh, it was the first time I had kind of had a bout of depression since uh, since I kind of admitted about having dealt with depression many, many years ago. You know, it had been years. And that kind of kicked me in the butt a little bit. And uh, Jen had the good sense to go like, you know what, uh, let's get out of here. Like, let's load up some suitcases, uh, get in the truck and go for a drive. You know, we'll figure out where we can stay that's the safest and we can have masks, we all have masks and gloves. Um, and we're very responsible about it. But um, when I got back from that road trip that I think some of you might have seen pictures of, I was the guy who looked like uh, Grizzly Adams, um, who looked like I had kidnapped a beautiful family. It was like Jen and Tom and Chef and Odette, and then me like lumbering in, uh, probably stinky and uh, beard out to here. And uh, a, a buddy of Jen's um, had gotten some supplements for me uh, from a company called Mantra. Uh, rise, go, and rest. And my first thought was like, oh man, I mean, doing what I do, I've had a lot of different supplement companies over the years go like, hey, try our stuff and we think you'll like it and you'll get swole, or you'll get jacked, or you'll get shredded and You ripped. might even get good looking. You might even get good looking. Uh, no one no one tried to tell me that. Uh, <laughs> they knew that was a, a bridge too far. Um, but I was like, you know what, I'll, I'll give it a shot. At this point in time, it was like late July, early August, and um, we were about to fly back up to Vancouver. And so I guess it was like mid July actually. Um, and I got it and I was like, I'll give it a shot. You know, it's, it's, it's simple. It says take rise in the morning, um, take go if you need a little caffeine boost sometime during the day, uh, a little mental boost, a little clarity, a little more energy and take rest at night. And I was like, well, this is pretty plain and simple. Is this, is this COVID free? It's on, there you go. Right. Uh, let's see. Where Bye guys.